If you're watching this video, you might feel it too that we are approaching the times of the Great Tribulation, the hour of trial that should come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. No other book gives us more insight into these times than the book of Revelation. In this Revelation series, we have gone through this book from chapter 1 up till chapter 16, and we have seen the warnings and messages of encouragement that Yahshua has given to the seven churches, as well as the many prophetic events that will take place during this great tribulation. If you have not watched parts 1 through 6, I encourage you to go back and review the series. The book of Revelation contains many prophetic things that we must take heed to and understand. Our Father is truly awesome in providing us this vision of the future, because if you understand the end, then you may not be as easily swayed by all the false events and distractions taking place that are leading us to this end. So I sincerely believe that discussing the book of Revelation is highly important, and in these last days, I feel I have been led to discuss it as he places it on my heart. These next two chapters are about subjects that seem to be highly debated within those that seek to interpret them. It's about a great sum of wickedness and evil that we begin to see judgment and destruction of. Revelation chapter 17 and 18 discuss the whore of Babylon and mystery Babylon. Very important subjects that need to be covered. Now let me just give this disclaimer. I am not perfect. I do not claim to be Mr. Know-it-all. I just try to speak what I feel Father has placed on my heart, and I do it with the understanding He has given me. There will be disagreement, I'm sure, to this message, no matter what I say, because everyone has a view, just as I do. I do not argue about the book of Revelation, because it is all prophetic. It's about the future. So there is no telling whether anyone is right or wrong until it actually happens. So there is no reason to debate or argue. If you disagree and have a different opinion, it is okay. All I ask is that you state your alternative view with respect and without hostility, because it is truly uncalled for. It's not needed. So now that that's out of the way, let's discuss the book of Revelation. Let's begin. Revelation chapter 17. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth commit a fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman, drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. But the angel said to me, Why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they see the beast that was and is not and yet is, here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself, also the eighth, and is of the seven, and is going to perdition. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet. But they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Then he said to me, The waters which you saw, where the harlot sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. 
and the ten horns which you saw on the beast. These will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind, and to give the kingdom to the beast, until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman who you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Okay, so this is an important chapter. There's a lot going on in here. Let's break it all down. So Revelation chapter 17 goes back and fills in some more information that happens during the Great Tribulation. At the end of chapter 16, we saw the bowl judgments, which was the last judgment that came on the earth. Chapter 17 covers the specifics of when the whore of Babylon is destroyed. Now, what I see many people do is tie in Revelation chapter 17 with Revelation chapter 18, but I do not believe that this should be done. Babylon the Great is receiving judgment in both of these chapters, yes, but if you are reading objectively, these two chapters are talking about different entities. Chapter 17 is talking of the whore of Babylon, and this is dealing with the religious entity. Now what everyone wants to do is easily sum it up to be the Roman Catholic Church, and then declare it to be case closed, but I believe that is much deeper than that. Allow me to explain. In understanding the subject, you must understand the history of the first Babylon, where Nimrod and Semiramis built a pagan religious structure that went through the ancient world empires, from Mesopotamia, then Egypt, ending in Rome. I will not go over this information in this video. I have spoken of it in a few videos, the history of religion part one, the video explaining the one world religion, and the video about mystery Babylon. This is key information in understanding these chapters. In those ancient days, Satan made Babylon the capital of his evil rebellion. From this capital, his false mystery religions were started. There were two different aspects of Babylon. There was the religious entity, where like I said, all the mystery religions formed from. And then there was the political government entity, where the world government was being formed. Chapter 17 is dealing with the religious structure. Now to keep it very simple, the whore of Babylon is Semiramis, the mother goddess, the fertility goddess, the moon goddess, the woman who slept with her own son Nimrod and promoted worship of him as Baal, the sun god, the one who created worship of her other son, Tammuz, the son of God. She is the mother of harlots, the mother of perversion of false religion. We see her represented continuously from Isis to the Virgin Mary of Catholicism, to the Statue of Liberty, to Columbia. Many ways, many forms. Every time you see her as a symbol, you are seeing the harlot of Babylon. This vision is just a spiritual representation of her. When you understand this, many other connections in history and the present begin to make more sense. You understand why when Beyonce was pregnant, she did a performance representing her. So this is the harlot of Babylon, in very simple terms. But in bringing this vision into the present, into where we're going in the future, we can use that understanding along with other details in this vision and how she has manifested herself throughout the history of the world. Let's review more of the vision. In verse one, the angel tells John, come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters with whom the kings of the earth commit a fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. In this vision, the great harlot, or great whore, in verse 5 is named Babylon the Great. There are 10 details about the whore of Babylon. Let's go over them. 1. She is a great prostitute. Now this isn't physical prostitution, but spiritual. In the Bible, Prostitution often symbolizes idolatry or religious apostasy, spiritual adultery. There are a lot of instances like in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 21 when Jerusalem was called a harlot or whore. She is selling an apostate religion that pushes people away from the Most High. We are not talking about a literal woman, but an idolatrous church. 2. She sits on many waters. The waters represent the various people and nation of the earth, like verse 15 tells us quite clearly. Being that she sits on them, it is saying that she has worldwide influence. 
Number three, with her, the kings of the earth committed adultery. The kings of the earth, the rulers and political leaders of world history, have opened their arms to her influence. The whore of Babylon will ally herself with these world political leaders. Adultery not in the sense of physical marriage, but again, meaning going after other gods. Number four, the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. The whore of Babylon's influence will extend beyond the world's rulers to the rest of mankind. Again, be clear, this imagery does not describe actual wine and sexual sin, but displays the people of the world being swept up into the intoxication and sin of a false system of religion. Number five, a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. The scarlet beast the woman is sitting on is the Antichrist. For a time, he will support and use the horrors false religious system to affect world unity, but he will then take more political control like verse 16 alludes to. Scarlet is the color of luxury, splendor, and royalty. Number six, dressed in purple and scarlet. The whore is also dressed in purple and scarlet. She is portrayed as a prostitute who has applied her trade successfully and become extremely wealthy. Now, on a side note, this is one huge reason why people tie the Roman Catholic Church into solely being the whore of Babylon. And rightfully so, as you see that the ministers of this faith mimic this dress often. But just because they are showing us their connection to this wickedness does not mean that they should solely be linked to this chapter. Now please understand, they absolutely should be linked. You cannot separate them from the harlot. It's just that they should not be solely linked to the harlot alone. I'll explain this. Number seven, glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. Prostitutes often dress in fine clothes and precious jewels to allure their victims, like Proverbs chapter seven, verse 10 says. And there a woman met him with the attire of a harlot and a crafty heart. The religious harlot of Babylon is no different. She dresses herself in luxury to lure the nations into her grasp. People are attracted to wealth and power, and she displays it to lure the adulterous inhabitants of the earth in. Number eight, she held a golden cup in her hand filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. This is just more evidence of the harlot's great wealth. Just as a prostitute might first get her victim drunk, the harlot system does so as well, getting the nations drunk, then deceiving them into committing spiritual fornication with her. Number nine, on her forehead, mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and of the abomination of the earth. During those times, it was normal for prostitutes to wear a headband with their name on it, for they were not ashamed. In the end, all false religion stems from Babel, the place of the first one world religion and one world government. This label shows us this is the foundation of this wickedness. Number 10 drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of those who bore testimony to Yahshua. Very simply, the harlot has killed many of God's saints and Christian martyrs throughout the ages and will do so again during the tribulation period. And these are 10 details you should remember when looking back at the whore of Babylon in Revelation chapter 17. I will place this on my site. The link will be in the description box. Now, there are other details like the fact that she is riding the same beast we saw in Revelation chapter 13 in part five of this series. Much of the second half of this chapter is going over the same imagery that we saw in Revelation chapter 13. So there's not much reason to dwell on it in this video. But if you do not understand that imagery, go back to part five and review the information again. This chapter is important because of the horror of Babylon. You see, she came in riding on the beast and used the authority of the beast until her time is over. The whore of Babylon is not the Antichrist. The beast is the Antichrist. She is the one system before the kingdom of the Antichrist, which all kings, dictators, world leaders, and nations have been forced to bow down to throughout history. The Babylonian mystery religions. No system in the world's history has spiritually enslaved more people. Every false religion in the world can be traced back to Babylon. During those ancient days of the First World Empire, Satan had made that city his headquarters and introduced idolatry, the first secret societies, 
and many of the religious practices that continue to the present day. These eventually appeared as the foundational teachings for Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, Gaia worship, and many other cultic systems summed up in the Bible as Mystery Babylon. And so we see that through the whore of Babylon, the world who was under her influence committed adultery with her and were led away from the Most High. She will be used to bring about the one world religion where everyone believes that they are worshiping the same God just by different names. This is a major piece of prophetic history that you can see forming right now in front of our eyes. That is the first step of the new world order and the Antichrist will permit this one world religion, this apostate church, to govern his actions during the first three and one half years of the tribulation while he is gathering more and more power. That's why she is riding in on him. But in the middle of the tribulation, when he feels he can become a ruler with absolute power, he and the ten kings will throw off the prostitute or this one world religion because in reality, while being dominated by her, they hate the prostitute. You must remember, this was always about Satan being worshipped as God and he desires for the world to fully engage in this false worship of his son. The formation of the one world religion is just the icebreaker, the introduction to the full worship of the beast. When it is no longer necessary, the ten kings will bring her to ruin and leave her naked, meaning they will confiscate her temples, her gold, and her costly apparel. This then clears the way for the Antichrist to fulfill the lifetime dream of Satan to get people to worship him. The whore will be used all the way until the beast, aka the Antichrist, is ready to assume full power and have the whole world worship him. And this is the breakdown of Revelation chapter 17. So in this explanation earlier, I explained that the Roman Catholic Church should not be solely linked to the whore of Babylon. Like I said, they absolutely should be linked. There's no question about it. But it's not just the influence of the Catholic Church that the whore consists of. She is the apostate church who is filled with adultery and idolatry. There are many other apostate religions that have come out of Babylon, Hinduism, Taoism, Buddhism, etc. Those beliefs are not centered around the Roman Catholic Church. Yes, the Roman Catholic Church has a tremendous amount of power and it is an extremely powerful tool used during these end times. But sometimes we give it more power than we should. The Pope already has a very large role in playing the false prophet which is a huge end time role. And yes, the Vatican does orchestrate much blasphemy, idolatry, sorcery, and adultery against the Most High. But if we only pay attention to the Roman Catholic Church, it doesn't help us understand how many other influences are tied into the harlot as well. Just by applying this full chapter, when the beast and the ten kings ruins and burns the harlot, if the harlot was solely the Roman Catholic Church, then he would still have many other religious entities to deal with in order for him to be solely worshipped as God. It has to all fit. So I agree that the Roman Catholic Church is part of the whore. I just don't believe that she is the complete whore. The truth is that many of us outside of the Roman Catholic Church or those other religions I mentioned like Hinduism and Buddhism are also influenced by the whore. She brings an apostate idolatrous religion that takes us out of the will of the Most High. This is a universal apostasy. It does not only pertain to only one class of people, for instance, those influenced by the Vatican. It is also naive to believe that the Vatican controls all religious activity in the world. This is just not true. All that are influenced by the whore of Babylon are drunk off her intoxication. The same way a drunken person naturally has no earthly idea what he is doing when they are drunk, this apostate group influenced by the harlot is so carried away with the world that they too do not realize the terribleness of what they are doing. Like I said, the harlot is definitely found amongst the Roman Catholic Church that teaches an idolatrous version of the way. But she is also found in many Protestant Christian churches all across the world. There is a large percentage of those in organized religion that are found amongst those who have been influenced by the harlot. This is why there are so many that have said that Father has led them away from the organized churches of today because they can't find an organization that does not teach an idolatrous or watered down adulterous version of the true faith. So it is easy just to call out the obvious example of those that are influenced by the harlot of Babylon, but it goes much deeper. So what we should do as believers, 
we all must go through our belief and what was taught to us under these organizations and get rid of the false teachings, the idolatry, and the adultery because our Father has no tolerance for it. Look at all those false traditions, the celebration of pagan holidays, the idolatry of money and success, the attachment to this world, the rejection of his ways and commands. Review it within yourself. And if you have been influenced by it, get rid of it today. This whore of Babylon is an enemy of the God we serve, the God of ancient Israel. And we must not be influenced by her and drink from her adulterous cup of wine any longer. Be rid of her today. Let's continue. Revelation chapter 18. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached the heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she rendered to you, and repay her double according to her works. And the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. And the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen, and am no widow, and will not see sorrow. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. The king of the earth, who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her, will weep and lament for her. When they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise any more, merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple, silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon and incense, fragrant oil and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and bodies and souls of men. The fruit that your soul longed for has gone from you, and all the things which are rich and splendid have gone from you, and you shall find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, who became rich by her, will stand at a distance for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, the great city that was clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour such great riches came to nothing. Every shipmaster, all who travel by ship, sailors, and as many as trade on the sea, stood at a distance and cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What is like this great city? They threw dust on their heads and cried out, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich by her wealth. For in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found any more. The sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you any more. No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you any more, and the sound of a millstone shall not be heard in you any more. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you any more, and the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you any more. For your merchants were the great men of the earth, for by your sorcery all the nations were deceived and in her was found the blood of prophets and saints, and of all who were slain on the earth. That's deep. Now, I won't spend a great deal of time on this because I do cover this in a specific video. 
I spoke about chapter 17 in depth because there were many in the other video that wanted me to apply chapter 17 with chapter 18 when they are two different entities. Like I said earlier, chapter 17 is talking of the Whore of Babylon, a religious entity. Chapter 18 is dealing with a governmental entity. We know they are different specifically because they are destroyed at different times. The prostitute, religious Babylon, is destroyed by the beast and the kings of the earth who hate the prostitute and kill her. This governmental Babylon is destroyed in one day by cataclysmic judgments of God. Also, the kings who destroy the Babylon of chapter 17 rejoice. In Babylon of chapter 18, the kings and merchants lament and weep for her. And in verse 1 of chapter 18, we see that John says that another angel came down to show him what happened in this chapter. While in chapter 17, one of the angels who had the seven bowls showed him what happened in that chapter. These are different events. So in study, we can clearly see that we should not be applying chapter 17 and 18 together as the same. And unfortunately, that's what we see done often. Now, when you also tie in the other prophecies of Mystery Babylon that Jeremiah and Isaiah alludes to, you're able to gain even more understanding of what Mystery Babylon is. Now, in my specific video about Mystery Babylon, I explain in detail why I believe that the United States is Mystery Babylon, the governmental side of this prophecy. Now, there were others that disagreed with this view and said it all had to be the Roman Catholic Church. But I hope by now you can at least understand why I disagree with that view. In the end, what Mystery Babylon is does not matter, because from what we know about it, we know enough not to take part in her sins. Just as the religious entity of Babylon the Great, the harlot had the world fornicate with her in adultery. The governmental side of Mystery Babylon does the same, and it intoxicates the whole world through its values, customs, and ways, by spreading its doctrine of wealth and exceptionalism, by spreading a doctrine of satanic values of do what thou wilt, or do what you want, making so many accidental Satanists. Please watch that video to understand what I mean by that. We are told in verse 4 and 5, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. And so we must do just that. Come out of her. Come out of her ways. Come out of her values. Come out of her traditions. As a believer in Yahshua, we do not need to attach ourselves to this world and its values. We do not need to be, and should not be, of this world. James chapter 4 verse 4 says, Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with Elohim? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of Elohim. So attaching yourself to this world just makes you an enemy of the Most High. And I'm sure that's not what you want. Now, Mystery Babylon has a very decisive fate. It's destroyed in one hour. Many people ask me what I feel the timeline will be like when this happens. Do I think that this will happen before the Antichrist comes on the scene? No, I do not think this. I do think the economic collapse, which is a very different event, happens, but I do not think that Mystery Babylon is destroyed until sometime during the Great Tribulation. I do not try to predict dates. I used to years ago, and I was way off. I understand events that will happen, and I just try to prepare for them spiritually, emotionally, physically, and mentally. From these two chapters in the book of Revelation, there is just a constant theme and warning that we all must heed. Beware of the wickedness and deception that is in this world. Do not be swayed by evil and follow the adulterous and idolatrous ways of Babylon. Wherever you are in the world today, you have encountered the ways and values of Mystery Babylon. And it's important to identify it and make sure that you are no longer living through her mindsets and values. You must know the Most High for yourself away from the perversions that the harlot has spread. When just waking up to it, this does require humility because you may find everything you were taught was wrong. This is another reason why we are so blessed to have the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. This is why we are to be led by the Spirit and not by the flesh. This is why we should give the Holy Spirit free reign over our lives. If you allow his Spirit to guide your life and follow his lead, he will lead you out of the wickedness and tricks of this world. If you take away anything from this video, it's to come out of Babylon. Make sure you are no longer fornicating with the harlot. 
meaning partaking in her perversions, which make you an adulterer, meaning turning your back to the Most High and chasing after other gods. Little G. Make sure that your ways of following and worshiping the Most High are biblically sound. Make sure that you are not an idolater. This world has been drinking the wine of the harlot for many years now. It has been drunk off the intoxication of Mystery Babylon. In these last days, you must make sure that you are sober. In these last days, please make sure that you come out of her. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it with others. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I would like to give a special thank you to those who have donated and contributed to this ministry. Your contribution and support are a huge blessing to this ministry, and it truly provides the support I need to continue. Thank you for your obedience to Yahweh's call on your heart. I'm humbled by your support, and I'm very thankful for you. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.